Good morning, once again, and uh, we are here to continue with our theme of last week, the Christian, the progression of the Christian life. There's just one recap that I would like to mention, which I think is important, and uh, I've been chatting with Pastor Cho, we've been chatting over different things, and um, when we look at this incident here in Ezekiel with the water flowing from the ankles to swim in, there is one point I forgot, and I believe, friends, this also illustrates our understanding of God's Word, right? You know, it's little by little, and uh, so as we read the Word of God, as we listen to the Word of God, as we preach the Word of God, as we meditate upon the Word of God, but we came to the conclusion whilst we were chatting that the important thing is, friends, we must apply it. When we apply it, then the power of God's word is released. And uh, so I just, want to, uh, just wanted to recap on that. So we continue with our consideration of uh, Ezekiel's vision, which we have in uh, part of verse, uh, chapter 47, verses 1 to 5, where he saw these waters flowing from under the threshold, and as they flowed, they were getting deeper and deeper and deeper, and uh, we considered, um, considered this last week, and I want to continue with that. But it's interesting to note, friends, um, this is the, we are calling it the progression of the Christian life. If we note in these verses, there is nothing stagnant about them. Right? Nothing stagnant at all. And friends, there's nothing stagnant, or there shouldn't be, um, about our Christian lives. The Bible never refers to the Christian life as a pond. Have you noticed that? Never as a pond, but either a stream or a river or even an ocean. And you see, that speaks of movement. It speaks of uh, momentum and, and, um, and speaks of our development as Christians. And I repeat uh, last, from last time, God's direction is forward. But friends, his measure is fullness. So we go on. We don't stay there. We move on uh, to the deeper things of God. And um, we also noted in this vision that the water grew deeper and deeper as it flowed. Waters to the ankles, that speaks of our walk with God. And we could spend a lot of time on that. Then waters to our knees. And this speaks, friends, of we should have as Christians, we should have a consistent prayer life. We must make time to pray, and we must take time to read uh, the Word of God. And so, we see in this now the waters have come up to the, the prophet's knees, and then we read, as if we read further down, uh, it says this, then the waters were still rising, ankles, knees, but next it came to the loins. That's to the middle section um, of the body. And we are told that the loins uh, are the, the, the seat of physical strength in, in the loins. That's from the chest down to the thighs. But of course, we are looking at it from the spiritual point of view. We are looking here that this illustrates our spiritual strength. The Christians, as Christians, friends, we need to stand, we need to stand for the truths of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can't do it in our own strength. We might think we can, but we can't. But we need that divine strength. And do so, as Paul said when speaking to the Ephesians. He said, let your loins be good about with truth. And friends, it's the truth of word, God's word that makes us spiritually strong. That's why it's so important that we listen to preachers and we pray, and I pray every day that God will raise up good preachers and expounders of the word of God. Because friends, that's how we get strength, is as we take the word into our inner beings and apply it to our lives, then I believe, friends, we will come, become spiritually strong. And as we imbibe truth, friends, as we imbibe truth, you know, we will have that, that strength, that spiritual strength, moral strength, 
uh, to stand so that we are not blown over or blow, blown away by the, the new doctrines and false doctrines uh, that will arise day by day. You see, with God's word, as we imbibe God's word, we will sense the false a mile away. I remember Billy Graham's wife, they were in London and they'd be invited to a very important supper. And she said, I was sat next to the head of Scotland Yard's fraud squad. So she said, I got talking to him. And um, so he said, she said to him, sir, I guess you must take out the, you know, like a, a note or a false note or a false coin and you study it until, oh no, he said, I don't do that. He said, well, she said, well, why, what do you do? She said, he said, I study the original. And as I study the original, when it comes to the false, I've got it like a shot. And that's what it is with God's word, friend. When we walk with a God, when we imbibe his word, then we can, we can sense, friends, uh, the false um, a mile away. And again, that hymn we sing, you know, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. And friends, you know, as we imbibe God's word, he will show us uh, and he will make sure, friends, uh, that, you know, we don't stumble or fall and we don't fall into to the error. And I tell you what, friends, as the days goes on, these false teachings are going to increase and increase and increase. So it's only as we got the truth in us can we sense that which is not. And... Um, this is another hymn, excuse me saying this again, I got the wrong one there, didn't I? But that's right. Um, how firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, listen, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. So it all comes back to the word of God. It is so absolutely crucial. And so we need to be strength, strong uh, in our loins that we may be able to stand in that wicked wicked way. We must, as we come to the word of God, we have these waters to our loins and um, we must be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. When David went to the Goliath, he said, now look, you are coming to me with a sword and a staff. But he said, I'm coming to you in the strength of the Lord. And that's good, isn't it? He come in, and friends, we are no match for the enemy. We are no match for the enemy. But thank God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has conquered him. So the loins are the area of our strength. And please don't misunderstand me here, but it's a thought that came to me, and I'll share it with you. Um, also, friends, the loins are the area of reproduction. Right? We are adults, aren't we? You know, it's the area of reproduction. Now, I'm not talking about here about natural reproduction. I'm sure that the ladies don't want another Sarah experience today, having a child when she was nearly 100. But I believe, friends, there's this sense that, you know, we can be bringing forth fruit that is pleasing unto God. In fact, the psalmist said, you shall bring forth fruit in old age. And so in a sense, this progression never stops. And so, you know, friends, we can be bringing forth uh, those things which God has provided for us. And uh, it is so very important that we do. You see, we should have this desire. And I get so discouraged with myself that I think, you know, I should be further down the road than I am. A lot further, in fact. <laughs> and I think it's good to have that as long as it doesn't um, bog you down too much. And so, you know, it's the area of the reproduction. I remember, uh, some of you might know him, a great missionary pioneer out to Africa in 1915. And he was back home in Cardiff for a big Easter convention. And he was staying with the pastor, Mr. Brewster, and so about six o'clock in the morning, Mr. Bruce said, I'll take Brother Burton up a nice cup of tea. He said, when I knocked on the door and he said, come in, I opened the door, he said, and I nearly dropped the tray. 
He said, there he was, this man now up in his 80s, I think he was 80s then, with the Bible on his knees. And he looked up to Mr. Brewster and he said, Brother Brewster, I am still finding great treasures in the Word of God. Lovely, isn't it? We can still bring forth fruit in old age. And so, you know, that is um, a wonderful thing that we can enjoy, you know, the things of God in our later life. And we can bring forth these spiritual fruits. And we should be fruitful, friends, right to the end, right to the end. And um, that would be a great testimony to the people uh, who are around, are around us. Uh, I'm very grateful for a mother and father. They might not have been brilliant scholars, but they were excellent Christians. Right to the end, he continued. Someone said, it's one thing to start well, <laughs> but it's another thing to end well. And we want to end well as far as our walk and our, and, and our praying and everything else is in, in keeping with God's word. And so we have waters to the ankles. We are walking right, we trust. Waters to the knees. Our prayer life is in order. And waters to the loins. And, excuse me, and so we, have, we draw our strength from God. He is, he is the vine, we are the branches. And so we draw, from the, we draw that sap from the vine. And then we become strong and we become fruitful. Remember when the Lord saw the fig tree? And he was angry and there was nothing there. All leaves. And he cursed it. And someone said, the Lord wants fruits, not suits. And that's true, isn't it? And so there we have it, waters to the loins. And then finally, and very briefly, we notice then that there were waters to abound. He said there were waters to swim in. The waters grew deeper and deeper and deeper. And I think this is an area, friends, that's, that's often, often overlooked in our Christian life. But I believe... It's part and parcel of God's provision for us. Notice what it said? Waters to swim in. Now, I might lose some of you here. Uh, but it's lovely. I love swimming. I haven't done it for a long time now, but I was forever swimming, wherever I was, because of the sense of freedom, of liberty, of enjoyment. And, um, and so I think, bear with me, that this speaks, friends, of the joy and the fullness of, of abounding in God. And I think that's something we've lost, of abounding in God. And all that God has for us as Christians, I'll come back again, friends, God's measure is fullness. God's measure is fullness. And um, it's very interesting there that um, <clears throat> if we were arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict us. That's important, isn't it? And friends, you know, we, we need uh, to abound in the things of God. John 10 and 10. The Lord says, I am come that you might have life. Right? Living waters, life. But he said, it's more than that. It's more abundantly. And so, friends, we, you know, I think we lack in this area of, of the abundant life. And me as much as anybody. But friends, there is this binding, this, sorry, this abounding life um, in God. Now, I don't believe in swinging from the rafters, nor do I believe in doing cartwheels down the aisles. But believe, I believe, friends, there is a lovely liberty that we can know and we can enjoy and abounding in God that I believe is part of our Christian heritage. And in John 15, again, the Lord says this, These commandments have I written unto you, and I'm paraphrasing here now, not to bog you down, not to make you miserable, but that my joy might remain in you, but listen, friend, that your joy might be full. Right? Waters to swim in. 
It's there for us, friends. God has provided that for us. That is, friends, the life more abundantly simply means a life above the ordinary. And that's what being a Christian is. It's a life above the ordinary. People can't understand it because they don't know about it. And that's why we must keep rowing, getting people saved, that they might come to know Christ and to know this abounding life. And friends, we need to show this abounding life, as I said, in a very wise and simple way, uh, but it's so important. Uh, Billy, Billy Bray, the Cornish tin miner, uh, God wonder, wonderfully saved him, and he was always praising the Lord, like Pastor Cho. He was exactly like Pastor Joe. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! And he was like that. And uh, he said this, if you put me in a barrel... I would shout hallelujah through the bunghole. <laughs> oh, dear me, that's great, isn't it? Uh, and that's so, so wonderful it is. And so, here's the point, friends. Again, we come to application. When did we last plunge into the fullness of God's provision? Right? We're talking about spiritual things now. When did we last if you can say, take a lovely swim or a great dip into the ocean of God's fullness and enjoy the things of God. An elderly minister friend of mine who is now with the Lord made, which I thought was a fantastic statement. And I spent a lot of time with him. He's a godly man. And uh, not long before he died, I went there visiting him and he said, David, he said, listen to this. He said, when I get to heaven, now listen carefully, <laughs> when I get to heaven, he said, I will not enjoy God any more than I do now. Now that's a statement, isn't it? I remember telling my friend Bob Cox that, and his eyes opened wide. <laughs> it's a tremendous statement, isn't it? But he did enjoy God. I spent days and weeks, traveled with him, and he was full of God all, all the time. And so, Friends, we need to avail ourselves of this provision that God has given to us, that we can plunge into this and we can abound in the things of God. We can enjoy the things of God. A joyless Christian, friends, is a liability to his master. True? Nothing false or Cheshire cat, but a re genuine uh, joy uh, in the Lord. And I have to say that about Brother Peter and my, my brother John, in all fairness to him, um, sometimes he's like a house full of mice but John is fair play for John he's always praising the Lord and I, I envy him that he's, he's much more fluent than I am uh, and so that is so and so friends we are living like porters paupers sorry Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones said when we should be living like princes and I think I think there's a lot to be said in that and so I trust friends that when we have the opportunity, we will delve into the depths of God's ocean, of his blessing, of his fullness, of his provision, that we will enjoy that, that real joy, that liberty, that, that freedom that we can enjoy in the divine provisionness. The one who has given us all things to enjoy. And I think, friends, we, we all sort of start abounding. Paul said this, and it's like a contradiction anyway. He said, be steadfast, right? We're on the word of God. Be steadfast, unmovable, right? We are there, our walking, our praying, and our loins are good, we are strong. But he said, not only that, but always abounding in the word. And there's no contradiction there. We can be both steadfast and movable and yet abound in, in the things of God. He has given us all things to enjoy in this Christian life. And so there we have it. The Christian, prog the progression of the Christian life. Ezekiel saw these waters. First of all, they were at the ankles. And friends, let us be careful in these days particularly that our walk is right with God. I think, friends, there's too many things of the world invading the church. Friends, 
We are here to change the world, not the world change us. And I know it's very subtle, so we have to be careful that our walk is right. Then the water's to our knees. One of my favorite subjects, this, prayer. And how important it is, friends, especially in these days. Knowing the time, it is high time to awake out of our sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. And so, friends, let's get to our knees. Maybe you can't get to your knees. I can't knee pray for long because of problems with my legs. Uh, but you can sit down. David sat before the Lord. Others lay before the Lord. Doesn't matter, friends, as long as we make sure that we have that consistent prayer life. And we need, friends, to have those strong in our loins, in our strength. We stand firm um, on the things of God. And then, of course, and of course there we can bring forth fruit, can't we, in old age. And then finally, uh, we can have those waters to swim in. I remember the Lord saying to the disciples, out into the deep, <laughs> out into the deep. And when they did, they came back with a great haul of fishes. And friends, we can go out into the deep. We need not fear, because I believe this, friends, uh, that God will help us all that we might plunge into the depths of God's fullness and enjoy the rich blessings that he has for us. Amen. It's been very simple, but uh, that's what I felt on my heart, and uh, we trust that it has been of some use to you. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your goodness, for your love, and for your mercy. And we have been thinking, Lord, uh, this day, actually, over the years, Lord, how good you have been, how kind, how you have provided for us. Now, there are things that have happened, Lord, that we never, ever thought would come our way. There were problems we never thought we'd get out of. But, Lord, you've been there faithfully with us all the way through. And so we pray, Lord, that you will make us faithful, steadfast, unmovable, and yet always abounding in the work of the Lord. We ask these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.